Hey indie filmmakers, Griffin here. Today I want to show you how to set up your Panasonic GH5. I'll walk you through all the menus, show you how to shoot with it. Plus, I'll just give you my settings file as a free download to make this whole thing a lot easier. But first, in case you don't know who I am, I'm a documentary filmmaker. I've been shooting with this line of cameras since the GH1 in 2010. I shot my documentary Sriracha on the Panasonic GH3. And three years ago, I showed you how to set up your GH4 in a video just like this. In fact, I am shooting this on two GH4s right now. And this time, Panasonic gave me the camera early. So I've been shooting on the GH5 since December when I made a short documentary called Hand Cut. So I've been shooting with this camera long enough to have all my settings for filmmaking figured out. So I'll take you through those, explain what they mean, show you how the menu system works in this camera, and talk about how this is different from the Panasonic GH4. Uh, but first things first, let's pop in a battery. This uses the same battery as the Panasonic GH3 and GH4, which is nice. So pop that in down here, flip on the on switch, and then we'll hit the menu button on the back. A quick note about the menus. The Panasonic GH5 has 139 menu items. That's up from 120 in the GH4. But the GH4 only showed five per page. The GH5 has a better resolution screen and shows eight. So it's a little bit easier to navigate. They've also given you more menus. There are six sub menus now inside the menu versus four on the GH4. One of them is a personalized menu where you can put whatever settings you want. There are a few ways to navigate the menu. You can either use the dial on the back to flip around the submenus and then click into one of the menus with the right button. You can also touch things and move around that way. You can also use the joystick, the new back button focus up here to move around the menus. Or you can use the front dial to switch between submenus and once you're in a submenu, use the back dial to switch pages inside that submenu. You can also push the display button to see what all of these submenus are called. We have the creative video menu, motion picture, custom, setup, my menu, and playback. And then you can also toggle display on and off to see what various menu items mean. Also, if you ever want to leave a menu, just push the shutter button halfway down. And that takes you back to the main screen and you're ready to shoot again. So let's start by saving your settings, even if you haven't changed anything yet, and we'll load mine in. Go to Menu, down to the Setup menu. We can see that when I push Display. Go down three pages to Save, Restore, Camera Setting. Let's save ours right now. We can call it Camset 02 or Camset 01, doesn't matter. Now if you take this SD card and pop it in your computer, you'll see four folders, the normal DCIM, miscellaneous, and private. But there's also Add Lumix. Inside that is another folder called CamSet, and inside that are the camera settings that you save. So if you just want to download my settings, my griffset.dat, you can move that into your CamSet folder, eject the SD card. By the way, I've been shooting with these SanDisk Extreme SD cards. They are plenty fast for shooting 150 megabits on the GH5. Once Panasonic comes out with a firmware update this summer to add 400 megabit shooting, I will need to get a faster SD card. Now I can go back to Save Restore Camera Setting and load GriffSet. Now that you have all of my settings, if you halfway push the shutter to get back to the main screen, you should see some things that are different. You will want to make sure that you have your mode dial set to create a video, the one with the camera. Before I take you through the menus and my settings and why I set everything the way I did, let me just show you the outside of the camera, what's different, and how to operate some of the functions there. So the body is a little bit heavier, just about the weight of one battery different from the GH4. They've also added a full-size HDMI port on the side and that dual SD card slot, which also has status lights. So up top we have our shutter, our aperture dial, our shutter dial back here, our white balance ISO. If I hit the white balance button, I can switch through all the different presets, custom, all that. Uh, or auto white balance. There are several function buttons that uh, you can actually set to whatever you want. So we'll talk about those in a little bit. All these function buttons. They've also added a function button to the very front here. And they've also added the new back button focus joystick. So the first thing that I've changed in the menu is in menu, creative video menu, exposure mode. I wanna be in all manual. So your choices are aperture priority, shutter priority, manual. I prefer to be in all manual. Then on the outside of the camera, 
I can use the front dial for aperture, the back dial for shutter. Variable frame rate is where you can up the camera all the way up to 180 frames per second in 1080. But I'm gonna come back to that and show you how I've made it a little bit easier to access that in my settings. Synchro scan is a setting for when you're filming lighting that has weird banding or like a monitor, and you really wanna dial in the shutter speed to get rid of that. SS gain operation, do you wanna see your shutter speed in seconds? or a fraction of a second, or do you wanna see it in shutter angle? I actually have it set to angle, so right now I can see it's at 180 degrees instead of seeing, uh, because I'm shooting in 30, 1 60th of a second. It also gives you the option if you wanna see gain as dB, or do you wanna see it in ISO? It's just your preference if you're a video person or a photo person. Vector scope, you can turn on a waveform or a vector scope now on the camera. And focus transition is a cool feature. You can set up to three rack focus positions and then have the camera automatically move between them. This is really cool if you wanna do an effects shot where you want your rack focus to be identical on every take. Now let's back out to the motion picture menu. So Panasonic has now split the motion picture menu into two. Inside the motion picture menu is our record format. On the GH4, I used to record everything as an MOV file. But now, if you want to shoot in 4K 60p, you need to shoot MP4. And there's plenty of good modes and high bit rates here in MP4. So MP4 LCPM made sense for me. You could see all those different settings in record quality. Uh, right now we're set to 4K 30p. I could jump up to 8-bit 60p or 10-bit 4K at 30p. And also cinema 4K mode in 24p. But I'm gonna leave this on 4K 30 for now. You'll also notice some of these have VFR available. Only this one does, this one doesn't. On the next page is uh, some of our 1080. All the ones that say FHD are full HD 1080, and they all have VFR available. So if I wanna shoot 180 frames per second, I can come in here, set it to full HD, go back to the VFR menu, and turn on 180 frames per second. Here is another setting that I like to turn off, continuous AF. Some of you may want autofocus operating while you're shooting a shot. I prefer to set the focus beforehand and then have nothing change during the shot. If you turn continuous AF off, you won't be able to use facial tracking and some of the cool autofocus settings that the camera has, but I prefer to leave that off. What I do though, is I leave the camera in AFS autofocus mode and I can, I have it set to push to focus, single area. So I can push the focus, the shutter halfway down focus, start the shot. With continuous AF off, I know it's not gonna change during the shot. Also in this menu is photo style. I like to shoot in the natural color profile. It's a little bit flatter than standard, so it's a little bit easier to color grade, but it also looks pretty good out of the box. So I can also put this on TV and no one will think it looks weird. But you can also try some other modes in here. There are the Cinelike D and V modes. If you buy the V-Log upgrade, that's where this will be. There's also Like 709, which is like the Rec 709 color space. Uh, and you can also set your own. So if you see people posting online different numbers for contrast, sharpness, noise reduction, color saturation, and hue, if people are posting those numbers, that's where they're making these changes. Luminance level just changes the way that the camera reports light information to the computer. It doesn't change the dynamic range of the camera. 16 to 235 seems to work well in Final Cut and Premiere, so good setting to have here. Stabilizer is where you can turn off the in-body image stabilization. If you're shooting with a Panasonic lens that has optical image stabilization, it probably has the little OIS switch right here. And that also turns on and off the in-body image stabilization. But this lens, the 12 millimeter, doesn't have image stabilization of its own, so working with the body, now it does. Here I could turn that on or off. I can also turn on e-stabilization, which is going to crop the image a little bit more and do some digital stabilization. I don't need that. Leave that off. Extended teleconversion is a feature that takes advantage of the fact that the sensor has more pixels than you're usually shooting. So if you turn this on in 4K, it'll actually punch in a little bit. And then in 1080, it'll just use the middle 1920 by 1080 pixels. The Panasonic GH4 actually kind of forced this on you. When you shot in 4K, it would punch in a little bit. Uh, this camera gets rid of that default crop factor, but you could turn it back on here. 
Mic level adjustment, we can change the mic level. We can turn off the mic level limiter. I prefer to turn that off so the camera's not doing auto gain. We can also, on the main screen, see the audio levels bouncing around. And if I wanna quickly change them, I can just go to this quick touch menu on the side and find the little microphone, and here you can change those levels. Sound output determines what you're hearing in the headphone jack. You can either hear real time or record sound. Real time is in sync with what you're actually hearing. Uh, record sound is a little bit delayed, but it's the actual thing the camera's recording, so I prefer that one. HDMI record output is the setting where you can decide what goes out over HDMI. So you may want to turn on the menu system or turn it off. Maybe we don't want to see the icons if you're recording on an external device and you can change the resolution that goes out. The next menu, the custom menu, is pretty big. It has 43 items, so they've split it into five submenus. But it's actually just one big menu and these five items are really just shortcuts to parts of the menu. If we start with exposure, setting ISO increments to one third just gives me three times as many choices with ISO. I can dial it in more precisely. And likewise, extended ISO gives me a few more options. I'm still capped at the top at 12,800, but turning this on lets me get below 200 ISO. I can actually go all the way down to 100 ISO, which has been nice sometimes when I forget to bring an ND filter. Shutter AF is good. That's pushing the shutter halfway down to start autofocus. AF assist lamp, I definitely turn off. I don't need this little light flashing at people in the dark when I'm trying to focus. I prefer to be pretty unobtrusive. You can turn that back on if you want. Function button set is where you can really customize this camera. Now I changed a few settings, but I tried not to go crazy because I still want you to know how to operate this thing. But if you go in here, you can change the settings in the record mode and you have function button one on top, function button two is the quick menu on back, three's below it, four's down at the very bottom, five is over here, and then function six is the new front button they've added, uh, and then seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 are all virtual. And even on the next page, you can even change what the joystick buttons do, like pushing it to the side, you can change what the left, right, up and down arrows do. Maybe don't go crazy so you don't completely change how the camera operates, but you really can customize this thing. There are only a couple of function buttons that I've changed. Uh, function button one on top. On the GH4, that used to be the wireless settings, which was actually kind of annoying because I would always bump it and turn on Wi-Fi. By default on the GH5, it's an exposure control that I don't need. So I've changed it to extended teleconversion. So if I push the function one button, I can decide whether or not I want to turn on that punch in or not. So I thought that made sense on top. I also changed function button six, the one on the front of the camera, to stabilizer. So now when I push this button near the lens, I can decide to turn the stabilizer on or off. Just a quick way to get to it. Otherwise, I left these mostly the same. I added a few things to the virtual menus. I added waveforms and peaking. Um, but if you wanna mess with the rest, you can. The one that I wouldn't mess with is Quick Menu. I think it's a great menu here. Function 2, this is probably my most used button on the GH5. Just by pushing it gets me to all of the major features that I need to access. The first one here is the different video settings. You can scroll between all the settings left and right and then go down to go into it. So now I can change what video shooting mode I'm in, or frame rate or resolution. I can also change my autofocus setting. I'm in single area, but I could do all sorts of different things here. You can change your shutter speed, your ISO, your white balance, and your picture profile, all from one quick menu. I really like that. Also in here, you can turn on and off the video recording button on top of the camera. I like using that button to record. It used to be on the back of the camera. They moved it on top. We're still in that same custom menu, but now we're down in the monitor section. So peaking, we can turn on it here. That's when you're in manual focus. I'll switch to manual and the camera will give you some assistance, just some little lines, some, some glowing lines to show you what's in focus. Guideline, I like having the rule of thirds guidelines on there. Highlight is a feature that Panasonic had before they had zebra stripes, so you shouldn't need it. 
and you can turn on zebra stripes in here. If you're overexposed, we'll show everything with zebra stripes. Uh, ideally, you just want the brightest things in the shot, the things that are supposed to be overblown, showing zebra stripes. That's everything important in the custom menu. So now let's go to the setup menu, where the first thing I want to show you is something cool I've done with custom set memory. So I showed you how it's kind of cumbersome to switch between regular shooting and VFR mode, variable frame rate. You have to dial in just the right video mode, then go over to VFR settings to set the frame rate. So if you want to switch between regular shooting and slow motion, 180 frames per second, it can take a little bit of time. So what I've done is I've set all the VFR settings and then saved it as the custom setting one, which corresponds to this part of the dial here. So now when I switch the camera to C1, it goes into my slow motion mode. Now I'm shooting in 1080 at 17% slow motion. And I can very quickly just switch back to create a video mode and I'm back to where I was, back to my old settings. The only thing that's annoying about switching between creative video mode and the custom setting is that it carries over all of your settings, including white balance and ISO. So if you keep switching back and forth, every time you'll have to reset your white balance and your ISO. This camera has built-in Wi-Fi, which I use for two reasons. One is remote shooting. Sometimes I'm filming myself and I want to see myself. In fact, right now I'm connected to this camera on my phone down here so I can, I can see what I'm shooting. Two is to send myself pictures. I can take a picture, connect to my phone, send it to my phone, and then post it on Instagram without having to swap out SD cards. Beep is the first setting I'll usually turn off on a new camera because uh, I don't want to hear the E shutter and the other operating beeps. Live view mode determines how many frames per second the screen that you're watching will show. I've decided I don't ever need to see 60 frames per second. Uh, even if I'm shooting in 60, I know what that looks like. Uh, so I'll let the camera conserve some battery life. Uh, monitor luminance, I turn that all the way up to one. It seems to do the least amount of auto brightness. It's also the brightest, so you'll burn through battery a little bit more. And eye sensor, you have to turn this off. I hate it. The eye sensor is the little sensor on the back of the, the live view monitor. The idea is you put your face up to it and it switches between the LCD and the live viewfinder. But in practice, I bump it all the time. I put it up to my body, it turns off the LCD. So I just leave this thing on monitor and now it doesn't switch on its own and you can push the LVF button next door to switch between the two. On page three is system frequency, which can be pretty important if you wanna change how this camera shoots. You can either shoot in PAL at 25 frames per second and 50 frames per second. You could shoot in pure 24.0p frames per second by switching to cinema mode. Or you could shoot in NTSC, which shoots 60 or 30 or 23.98. And just above the save restore camera setting is the double slot function which now that we have the dual SD card slot, you can choose how the camera uses those two SD cards. I've set it to relay record, which means when it runs out of space on the first card, it'll just keep rolling onto the second card. You don't have to do anything. Now you may also be interested in backup record where it shoots to both cards at the same time or allocation record. I use a lot to send video to one card and photos to the other. The only thing to look out for that happened to me is I got used to shooting in relay record mode. So when I switch to allocation record, it stops rolling when it gets to the end of the card. Now the camera is smart enough that when you push record again, it'll start rolling onto card two, but it won't do that seamless record unless you're in relay mode. And the last feature that you really need to know about in the setup menu is format, where you can clear your cards. Finally, because I really don't need to show you the playback menu, it's pretty self-explanatory, I just wanna show you my menu. It's where you can put whatever settings you want. And I've put some of the harder to find ones in the menu that I might need quicker access to, like stabilizer, continuous AF, uh, the Wi-Fi settings, format. You can put whatever you want in here. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, please click the like button. It's easy to do. And let me know in the comments if you have any other questions. I'm gonna take this and go shoot some stuff.